Hello everyone, Melody here, mom of four in our blended family of six. Welcome to Homeschool Happy Hour. Today we're going to be looking at this curriculum, the story of science, along with the student guide and the teacher handbook. Before we go any further, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and check us out on Instagram at Homeschool Happy Hour. If you are new to our channel, welcome. I'm so glad to have you here. My channel is all about sharing homeschooling resources with you guys, tips and tricks. Some of the resources that I previewed for our year worked great for us. Some of them didn't. Some of them were kind of a 50-50 mix. And I am always wanting to help answer your questions about resources and get you a close-up look at them. So today we're going to do just that with this resource, which if you remember, we took a brief look at for preview at the beginning of the school year, but now we have made our way through a majority of this book. And I wanted to give you a more close up, look at the inside of it and let you know what we thought about these books. The Story of Science, Aristotle Leads the Way is the first in a three book series by Joy Hakim. It is a nice hardback book. We will get a close-up look at the inside of this in just a second. It comes with the Student Quest journal and the teacher guide. Now, I was very excited about these books. I'm a really big fan of Joya Kim's History of Us books. There is a video on those if you want more information. And when I found that she had science books as well, I was thrilled when I found that it came with some actual student teacher materials to go along with it I was really excited about it unfortunately it did not work out for us the way I had intended it to and so we did not continue with the teacher guide or the student guide for very far into our homeschool we did continue with the book itself and I will show you why. So let's take a look on the inside of each of these. Here are all three books. You have the textbook itself or storybook, depending on how you want to consider it. It is a nice hardbound uh, or hardcover book. And then we have this teeny little uh, student guide. And last we have this teacher guide, which is quite large spiral bound that goes along with both of these. So let's see, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Let's do the teacher guide first. Taking a quick look at the teacher guide. Uh, as I said, I actually did not use this for very long. I really was looking forward to using it. And so I did talk a little bit in the preview about what is in here. And I don't know that I can add a lot more to that from personal experience because we chose to discontinue using it, but I can tell you a little bit about why. At first I liked the way it was laid out, but then I found rather quickly that the science lessons were very long which is good, maybe I will save it and use it more when my kids are older, I don't know. But for where we're at at this point in time, the kids rapidly lost interest in what we were doing. It just simply was not holding their attention like I had hoped it would. Also, it did seem to be geared more toward classroom than I anticipated. It does allow for homeschooling, it, it is intended to be used for classroom or homeschool, but some of the projects they had in here or the directed activities were focused more on discussion with a group. And in our homeschool, there's just the three of us, so it wasn't a very big group. And then the children were just getting cranky about it. These are the answer sheets to the student quest guides. But as you can see, there's quite a few pages for your students to complete. Pretty much covers that same format all the way through. It does have some pictures in the back. I mean, I do appreciate they tried to have a little bit of pop of color, but the just blue and white 
gets really old really fast and it just didn't feel like it was any more exciting than just a standard black and white. I mean, I guess maybe it is, but we weren't thrilled with the simplicity of what little illustrations that they had in here. So that's really all I'm gonna tell you guys about that one. If you have a specific question about this one, I can look it up, you let me know. But like I said, we didn't stick with it for very long, so I can't give you a really thorough um, front to back look here. Next was the student guide. Now I did consider using this without the teacher guide and just jumping in where they have this little pe these little pieces of information here because they have some great potential vocabulary words or if you're into spelling, spelling words, that kind of thing. But again, my kids were not super interested in it. They did it for a little while, as you can see. We've got some stuff written down and I appreciated how some of these things required them to really think it through. It wasn't just your basic fill in the blank, here's your answer. It was a thought process, which is important. But that was it. Like we got to lesson four in here and we were like, nope, we're not doing this anymore because they, they just didn't want to. It became a fight and I want them to enjoy science, not argue with me about it. I didn't feel like it was reinforcing the reading materials in a positive way. And so we set this aside as well. But if you're curious what the inside of it looks like, because it might work for you, I'm just trying to give you a glance at a few of the pages in the interior. This one I'll spend a little bit more time on. This is the textbook itself. And I actually really love this book. One of my kids really enjoys it. The other one is tolerating it more or less. It is more history than science in my opinion, but it is called The History of Science. And it has allowed us to dip into and explore some things that we might not have explored otherwise. And so I appreciate it for that. It does have notations, like if it has a little infinity symbol here, that means there's a math connection to it. That has been great. I love showing my kids how math and science are intermingled and connected. For Bean Bean in particular, she really loves both. And so it's been great for her. Now, somebody mentioned to me, the first quote in this book is from the Bible, but this is a secular resource. You'll notice the next quotes are from, let's see, this one's from the Mayan people. Uh, this is a Hindu epic poem. She's just trying to give an example of different viewpoints from the beginning, which I really appreciate. Now, it gives you, we talk about BC or BCE, gives you an explanation of that. It gives you timelines in the beginning of the book. And each chapter starts with some quotes. I love the illustrations and the photographs that they have in here. They're colorful. I love that it's told in a story-like manner and that it connects other areas like math and language arts. Now I'm just scanning through here so you can see what the inside of it looks like. I bought it based on our use of History of Us, which I think works well for all ages. This one is definitely geared toward older kids or kids that are interested in a deeper level of reading. Typically the way we use it is I read a chapter aloud. Some of these chapters are a little bit too long for my liking. I prefer having a little bit shorter chapters to keep their attention. But they also have these types of pages where it's like side notes and it's incorporating math and that's definitely worked well for us. Right now, let's see, we are on, we just finished chapter 17, I believe, and at that point, let's see, we're just a little over halfway through the book. It's mostly been covering this area, history in the Mediterranean Sea and the surrounding area, which is where our first records of scientific thinking really started. Now I say records of, because I don't want to suggest that there wasn't scientific thinking elsewhere in the world, but it's all about who wrote it down 
And so that's what we're left with. We love learning about the different people. Um, there's some funny facts in it, like uh, Plato, his real name wasn't Plato. He was given that name in school because Platon means broad shoulders and he has broad shoulders. And so funny things like that we really enjoy learning about. I feel like it's well balanced. I feel like she's willing to question everything and it's not necessarily stated as these are the indisputable facts of history. It, she frequently states, you know, this is what is written down, this is what these people believe, but nobody really knows 100% unless you were there, which we were not. So that is pretty much the inside of this book. I'm excited to finish this book this year and move on to the next one, which I believe is the story of science, Newton at the center. Hopefully that answers any questions you had about this curriculum. If you have a question that I did not answer already, please drop a comment in the box below. Again, this curriculum is a little bit older than I had anticipated it to be. It still worked well for us from with the book. Um, but if you have much younger kids, I would maybe hold off before you start in on the story of science because it's older than the History of Us series. At least that's how it came across to us. It's a great science history mix and it also has a lot of other touch points on math and literature and that kind of stuff. As always, thank you for joining me and I will catch you next time.